a nerve center for all of eastern Kentucky and all of central Kentucky. Uh, Louisville, after 1820, became the major uh, commercial city of the state. Choosing a selection of the um, capital of the state, how, how was that done? That's a pretty complicated issue. Of course, uh, you would have thought they would have chosen one of the major towns in the state, uh, like Lexington or Louisville, or uh, Danville, for instance, or Harrodsburg, but they didn't. Uh, they went to Frankfurt for various reasons, and I'm not sure that I'm entirely right about all of them, but one of the reasons, it was located near the center of Kentucky population at the time. It also was located on the river, easy access by water, uh, the people of Frankfurt supplied some materials and support for the building of a capital. And like all things everlastingly, including the, the observation of the Ten Commandments in Kentucky, there's some kind of political implication involved. Okay. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself, besides the immense amounts of knowledge that you possess. How did you get in interested in history? I came to Kentucky in 1928 without knowing a single soul in this state. I got off the train down here on September the 14th, 1928, with 25,000 Kentucky Republicans milling around. I had never seen a Republican <laughs> who wasn't a postmaster until I rode in a seat from Ashland down here with uh, Charlie Curtis, who was running for vice president on the Hoover ticket. I came here as a student, University of Kentucky, graduate, I was a graduate of the University of Mississippi, and I started work on my master's thesis in the field of Kentucky history, writing on the subject of trade and slaves, uh, uh, livestock and hemp between this area and the lower south. And I became very much interested in the history of the state from that. And there's scarcely a day gone by in the last 60 years that some way or other I haven't been involved in uh, doing something about the history of the state. We also understand that you've written 20 plus books. Can you tell us what some of the books are, are about? Well, I've published the History of Kentucky, uh, the Exploring Kentucky, which was used a long time in the schools. I published the Kentucky in the Rivers of America series, the Rampaging Frontier, uh, Frontier America, the Emerging South, Peels, Petticoats and Plows, Southern Country Editor, and I've just published The Greening of the South, which has to do with reforestation and conservation of the Southern land. We were talking earlier about the changes that, that have been made, We've and when we've interviewed other people, we've asked them what changes they've seen take place. Can you tell us a little bit about the changes you've observed since you've been in Kentucky? In the state or in the county? In the state. Oh, yes. The phenomenal changes. I, despite all of the discussion of the educational system and the uh, uh, low standing in many categories of educational effort, I've seen phenomenal changes in, in educational endeavor. I think I've seen, although I'm no longer in the classroom, I think a much better prepared student is coming to college and universities now than in the old days. I've seen the family farm virtually on the way to disappearance. Who would have thought in 1928 that the great tobacco industry in this state would be threatened as it has been? Or, or you would be very remiss not to observe that Kentucky has made phenomenal progress in breaking the barrier of isolation in building its highway system and uh, going into every part of the state. Uh, in the Clements administration, that uh, legislation uh, from uh, uh, building uh, farm to market roads, uh, building the interstate highway system, and then of course supplemented by the toll road system in the state, has made marked uh, changes uh, in Kentucky. I've also seen Kentucky fail to meet its challenges, fail to come up with what it's possible for it to do. Kentucky is still a provincial agrarian state trying desperately to just kind of ease into the 21st century, very poorly prepared to do so. What do you think about what John's doing? 
But I think it's very interesting indeed to go into all 120 counties in this state is a monumental undertaking. And he's gathered up a contemporary a vignette uh, look at the, the state that 50 years from now, people will turn back to these uh, tapes and see that old historian in Lexington and all these people around the courthouses in 119 other counties and say, good God, is that where we were at that time? No, I think it's a, creating a very nice, interesting, and useful historical document. I just wanted to come over here for a second to heap a little praise. It's not necessary, but I'm going to do it for this gentleman, Dr. Thomas Clark, because not only did he teach there at the University of Kentucky when I went there to UK, and I had Dr. Charles Talbert for Kentucky history, but I used your book when I taught American history in high school and Kentucky history in high school. And uh, it was a great deal of honor that I did so. You know, I look back over my history myself, and I had uh, people like uh, Mrs. Hinsdale uh, for a history teacher in the eighth grade. And you remember those people that make a mark on your life. And Dr. Clark, you've made a mark on many people's lives here in Kentucky and across the United States and world. And we're very proud of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you spoke of a very fine historian in Charlie Talbot. Charlie was very precise and exacting in his uh, book on uh, uh, Benjamin Logan is an excellent book. He also had a very fine volume on the history of the later years of the University of Kentucky. He, he, was, a, he was, and he was an excellent teacher, as the people in northern Kentucky will tell you. Absolutely. It's indeed a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, sir. It's nice being here with you, and good luck, John. Thank you so much. And good luck. Thank you, lady manager. I'm John Stevenson. June Guyman and I along with Kentucky's historians, are proud to give you the history of the 4th Congressional District. 